DayZ is a big open-world MMO title that forces players into surviving the zombie apocalypse. What makes this game a thrill is that not only are you stranded in this open world, full of overgrown cities, mountains, forests, lakes, and rivers, but you have the undead along with other players to worry about. Players start by scavenging items, everything to keep your protagonist fed and items to heal, while also coming across gear to further protect yourself from enemies such as armor and weapons is pretty crucial. However, you can work with friends together as you attempt to overthrow other players in the open world. Furthermore, there's always the chance you can come across another player that's also alone or with a small group which may allow you to join in and continue on your search for resources or rating. Metro Exodus is the culmination of the franchise in many ways. Because in previous titles, you were asked to just survive in a location that had been heavily devastated by war. Now, you are on a mission to try and find a new place to live for the survivors that remain. You'll be a Spartan Ranger and take a locomotive across Russia in hopes that there is new life in the East that can be used to house the remaining people under your care. Explore the lands you come across, scavenge anything you find so you can use it to craft items and weapons later, and defeat anything that might come across your path. The world isn't what it used to be in Days Gone. The title puts you as a bounty hunter trying to survive a world where a pandemic devastated the population and gave rise to monsters. Days Gone is a compelling zombie horror survival game that makes good use of the open world format. With the world decimated, you'll hop on your bike and scavenge to see if anything is worth taking. You'll fight other groups, take on monsters known as freakers, and work with survivors to make life better if you desire. As Deacon St. John, you'll search for meaning in a cruel world devoid of it. <gasps> Minecraft typically revolves around starting with nothing and then destroying the surrounding terrain to gather and craft resources. You build your base, kill some animals for food, and then it's time to go down in the mines. Given the Minecraft Caves update recently, going down to the mines to hunt for diamonds and iron has never been more exciting. Your Minecraft experience is your own, so it's up to you if you invite friends, join public servers, or go slay the Ender Dragon solo. Either way, Minecraft is vibrant and developer Mojang simply keep adding more content. Sure, this content takes a long while to come out, but it's usually so worth it when it does. If you want us to talk about an actual survival game from top to bottom, let us discuss Rust Console Edition. It is one of two games on this list that focus on you making a character that ends up on a deserted island with nothing on them. With enemies everywhere and all of them trying to kill you, you must rise above and survive with whatever you find. Look for items to clothe, protect, and equip yourself for every scenario the island may throw at you. The game has been updated numerous times, giving you a complete experience. Surviving upon the ocean is not something most would want to do, but when your plane crashes, and that's where you land, you'll have to make do with what you got. Stranded Deep will have you searching everywhere for supplies to survive. Whether that be on top of the water, below the water, or on the various islands you come across in your travels. Find whatever they offer, then craft shelter, weapons, tools, 
Whatever it takes. Everything you do will affect your health. You'll need to stay fed, hydrated, and out of the sun to ensure you survive. There are two games in the Dying Light series, and each puts you in tough scenarios you must endure. No matter which you play first, you'll be in a world filled with zombies and opportunistic people. Your actions within the cities you reside in will affect the course of power and how the city evolves. A fun twist is you don't need to constantly fight zombies if you don't want to. Instead, you can parkour around them so they never bother you craft weapons, and use them wisely because it's more than the undead you have to fear. <laughs> Tribes of Midgard puts you in a procedurally generated version of Norse mythology and you'll wander around the lands and seas to survive Ragnarok. As you travel, seek out items and resources so you can craft better ships and better weapons and unlock better skills to handle the threats that are coming. Arguably the best part of the game is that there are two modes to try out. One focuses on your character's adventures, while the other puts you up against the forces of Ragnarok to see if you can last. One of the benefits of survival games is that there are plenty of unique settings to put a character in to see if they survive. In Green Hell, you'll be put in the depths of the Amazon rainforest. It's one of the most inhospitable places for humans, yet you've ended up in the middle of it. To survive, you will initially have nothing but hands and a radio, and in order to withstand the treacherous rainforest, you must learn to use your surroundings to craft tools, weapons, and get food. A dark mystery lies at the heart of your struggles, so be prepared for its revelation. Only the strong can survive in a land where gods, monsters, and humans reside. Conan Exiles tests you in a world where mercy is rarely shown and gives you full reign to determine your path. Within this realm, you must protect yourself from the elements. So clothe yourself in adequate garb and ensure you stay warm by lighting fires or staying in shelters. You can play the game alone and see how long you last or work with other players to build kingdoms. Or you can lead the charge and take over lands controlled by others. With Vigor, you have a shoot and loot experience that awaits you. You'll be set in a post-war Norway and survive the apocalypse that has come upon it. You'll need to scavenge for supplies and do your best to overcome the challenges from other players and nature itself. You can build a home to survive in and ensure your safety or just wander from spot to spot to try and take out any threats before they find you. If the main mode isn't to your liking, the game offers others that you can directly challenge other players in. At first glance, Ark Survival Evolved appears to be a mad scientist's wet dream in terms of concept. It borrows plenty of elements from science fiction tropes, like an enclosed island with hidden futuristic technology and guns too. However, what makes Ark stand out is its local fauna or creatures, dinosaurs. You can capture, tame, and ride Velociraptor-like creatures and even use them to fight some nasty T-Rex dinos. You can even capture and tame the T-Rex yourself. Moreover, Ark's fascinating creature feature doesn't stop with dinosaurs, they also have plenty of other more alien-looking beings and even bosses that can be crucial to gameplay. It still has the standard survival fare of collecting, crafting, and looking after your needs, meaning survival is still the top priority here. Pray for the Gods is an open-world game where you play as a lone hero sent to the edge of a dying frozen world to discover the mystery behind an endless winter. 
you just have to start with the clothes you're wearing and avoid the enormous dangers you face. In order to restore the balance and save the land from death, you will be faced with questions that even a god does not know the answer to. Overcome impossible odds to reach the top and defeat the massive monsters bound to these lands. The sequel to the hit survival game Subnautica, Below Zero takes you back to that mysterious alien planet, but with a cold twist or two along the way. One of them is that you're there to solve the mystery of what happened to your sister. Plus, what happened to the research teams that once populated this frozen region of the planet? As you explore above and below the depths and all that lies within them, you will encounter research stations that will aid you in your quest. Fight the cold with these air-evolving alien creatures and find the truth you seek. Oxygen. There are many ways to survive in an open world. Sometimes you want a game that gives you freedom with how you choose to exist within it. For those seeking such titles, check out Terraria. The game gives you a procedurally generated world and asks you to do nothing but what you want. For example, you might want to bring a friend into your world and together you'll build a city to live in. Or perhaps you want to explore the world, fight monsters, collect treasure, and see all it offers. That choice is available, so jump in and see what you'll do. The world has always been a matter of perspective, and in Small Land, you'll get to see that perspective from one being who is incredibly small. Set in the world of man, but within the nature that is all around them, you'll start your journey to survive all that is out there. For example, with the size of your character being what it is, small insects are now massive monsters that you'll have to either fight to survive against, or tame so you can ride around the world on. The world is big, and you'll see traces of more that is out there. So dive into Small Ann and what it's like to be so small in a world that is so big. In the forest, you're a lone plane crash survivor who finds themselves on an island inhabited by some very hungry cannibalistic tribes and later mutants. While fending off hordes and trying to survive, you're also tasked with finding your lost son, Timmy. This means delving into a lot of treacherous caves and regularly putting yourself into terrifying and risky environments. The forest intertwines survival with horror and has a rather neat, optional narrative to embark on too. Like a lot of the survival games on this list, the forest truly shines when played alongside friends. Friends are also great for dealing with cannibals and mutants so that you don't have to, if you're able to convince them to take on the task. The term open world has been thrown onto many games over the last several years and not all live up to the hype. After all, just because you have a nice space to roam doesn't mean you can do much in it. However, in 7 days to die, the massive area they give you is full of conflict and opportunity. It all depends on what you want to do with it. You'll be put in a zombie infested world alongside legions of players and must decide how you will live. Fight against the undead and craft items to make it to the next day. Join up with other players to form a party or carry on alone. One of the most beloved survival experiences has come to consoles, which means it's perfect for playing on your PS4. Don't Starve Console Edition is a survival title where your character is taken from their cushy life and thrown onto a mysterious island of magic, science, and monsters. There's no guide or tutorial to this game. 
If you want to survive, you'll have to figure everything out. So search the island for materials to use. Build whatever you need to survive the challenges to come. But also keep an eye out as you might learn the truth about what's really going on with this island. Be smart, stay safe, and don't starve. What is a survival game in the truest sense? One that forces you to focus on all aspects of survival, not just fighting off what's in front of you. To that end, The Long Dark is arguably the greatest survival game ever. The game puts you in the frozen wilderness of Canada and asks you to survive. The game plays with the typical game mechanics you'd expect from survival titles to ensure you have the ultimate survival challenge. When you die, you have to start all over again. Your health and safety are in your hands. Do you think you can brave this frozen north? Ooh. <laughs>